Okay, let's talk about queries in Access. So I have a database here that it has three tables, customer, groomer, and pet, customer, groomer, pet. And we're going to use these to make queries about and to extract information from the database. So I have um, all of my tables open, but in fact, I'm going to close them. I just wanted to show you that there's three. And notice that in here, there's a pet name and there's also a groomer number. So I have pet pets in here and they have some names and we have some groomers. Now I'm not quite sure that I have all of my pets listed in, well I don't, I, I have more customers with pets than I have pets in my table. But I'm not going to worry about this. We're, we're just dealing with, in a real database of course we would, um, we uh, our tables would be complete. Um, I think I changed the, the size of the um, the columns here and that's why I keep getting that message do you want to save the changes to the layout of the table all the information is still there because remember when you add information to a database and you go down to the next row in that table that information gets saved automatically okay so I want to create a query and we're going to do our queries by design not through the wizard and we want to do our queries by design because we want to be able to um, put stuff down here, certain criteria and sort things different ways. So we're going to do this in this design query. And the first um, table we're going to use is the customer table. So I'm going to add it in there and I'm going to close this. We might use another table later on. So I'm going to kind of scooch my window around here a little so that you can see more um, in what what I'm do using here in the video. I have my screen a little bit shorter so that video isn't taking up so much bandwidth when you watch it. All right, so I'm going to make a query and then I'm going to run it up here under the run. I have this view which is the um, switching between the answer and this design view, data sheet view and design view, but it's always my habit to make the query and then run it first. It performs the action specified in the query, whereas the view just changes the view. So I'm not touching anything in here. I'm leaving all that alone for right now. So maybe I want the customer number and to get the customer number down in here, you can see there's this drop down, but I don't like to use this. I just like to look up here and I double click. When I double click on that, it pops it down here. Let's see, customer number. I'm going to do first name, then last name, and uh, pet. This is types of pets. So this was from that um, first table we built. So these are the types of pets, and this is some drop down list of um, certain pets. So now I'm going to run this, and I'm going to see. So we have uh, 10 customers. Oh, let me shrink my window a little here. All right. You can see we have 10 customers and they have these different types of pets. Okay. And uh, we just leave it alone. So for our class in uh, Clark College BTEC 150, we instead of printing out this query to tell your teacher that you did the query and here's the answer, you're going to save this to a Word document. So to highlight the whole thing, I just click up in this corner here and I can either hit copy or control C on my keyboard and that copies it. And then I would open Microsoft Word. Let me just open Word here. And um, let me shrink the window down a little so that you see I have Word here. And then I would paste it. So there's my query. Um, I would call this, I don't know, query one or query number one or something like that somehow and in fact I don't even need, need to do that I don't know why I'm doing that it's right here so I do query one or if there was some other way I need to um, make that visible and then I always hit the enter key so that I have a blank space here because if I insert the next query that I find and, and put it right in here Word will mesh these two tables together in it and the next query might have um, five or seven columns so it ends up looking really clunky so I always add an extra space and make sure my cursor's blinking in that 
Then I minimize Word. I'm going to go back to my query. I'm going back to Design View. And now maybe I want to set the criteria to something specific. For example, I only want pets where um, they have a dog. Let's see how this works. So I'm, I've said the customer number, first name, last name, and now the criteria is dog. I put it within quotes because this is text. The data type for this field is text. I'm going to run it, and sure enough, I have four customers with dogs. If I wanted to change this to um, bunny, run it. I don't have anyone with a bunny. Do I have some? I think we do. Hamster. Now, if I spell it wrong, I don't think that's how you spell hamster. Oh, yes, it is. Okay. Um, someone has a hamster. I thought that someone had a bunny. Maybe we used rabbit as the. Oh, yes, we. Within our drop down, it has to match this. There's no such thing as bunny in one of these. The word is rabbit. So it couldn't find a match for bunny because there wasn't one that existed. All right, so I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to leave this as dog, run it again. So you can see how easy it is to go back and forth and back and forth. I'm going to copy this to my Word document and paste it and call it query2. It's really that simple. I put an extra space in there, and then I would go on and on. So I'm not going to show you how to do any more with the word. You, you see how to do it. So I'll just minimize that for now. All right, so what other things can we do in here? Well, let's get rid of this category for a minute. I'm going to highlight it. See how my cursor changed to that little um, arrow like this? So I selected the whole thing. Or I could just change it here to, say, a balance. So the balance field is not a text field. So I couldn't do dog. If I left dog in there and ran it, I would get nothing. Mismatch criteria. This balance is a currency field, and dog is a, a text field. So let's see who doesn't owe us any money. Maybe they're going to get a Christmas card from us. Okay. So we have three customers that owe us no money. Yay! I would copy this over to Word if that's what the query was. Back to Design View. Okay, Let's see who does owe us money greater than a dollar. So now we know all of the people that owe us a lot of money, right? So then we, you know, we call them up and we say, hello, Mrs. Alvarez, please pay your balance or something like that. And again, I would copy this to a Word document if this was the criteria the teacher was asking for. Back to Design View. And so now that I've run it and have the answer, I can just switch between a Data Sheet View, Design View, Data Sheet View, Design View. Um, I find a lot of students will just run the query. I'll run something over $10 and do this. You get the answer. It's exactly the same as hitting Run. But it's just my habit to hit run. I don't know why Microsoft, if it's unnecessary, why it's still there. So there must be some reason um, that the run button is still there. So I, I'm going to leave it as run. And then once I have the answer, I can switch back and forth. OK, so let's look for certain customers in a certain city. So I'm going to double click, and city shows up here. I'm going to leave this um, balance of over $10 here. And I'm going to say we're looking for all customers in um, Grant City. And this is a certain city that we have in the database. So I should have some customers. But this query is only going to give me the answer of customers in Grant City that owe over $10. So if nobody in Grant City owes any money, I would not see anything. But in fact, we have two people in Grant City. So now let's look what happened when I changed this from the criteria of Grant City, and I put it down in the OR row, OR $10. So right now what I'm saying is 
give me all the people in Grant City and all the people that are over $10. So this is going to expand. So let's see if it meets the criteria. Grant City, yes. Grant City, no, but it's over $10. Grant City, yes, it's under $10. Doesn't matter, Grant City. So when you use that OR row, it, um, the, it frees up the, the, um, the, the query to be larger, or um, I'm not saying this right, but it allows more uh, records to show up. So you have to think about, are you want, do you want to restrict this to only those people in Grant City, or are you interested in everybody who owes, let's see if anyone if no one, if there's someone in Grant City who doesn't owe you money, yes, Green Furden, Jean Furden, or something like that. So that's this OR row. Now if I wanted to know all the people in Grant City who owed greater than $10, and all the people in uh, Portage, I think this is another city, that owe over $20, or over ten dollars, I'll use the same. Over ten dollars, I need to put ten dollars in don't in both places because watch what happens. I'm going to do it this way. I don't know if this city is spelled right. Let me see. Yes, there is Portage. So Portage, 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 and they're over ten dollars. But if I say this over ten dollars in Grant City and Portage, and I don't put greater than ten dollars in this row. What do you imagine I'm going to get? I'm going to get all the people in Portage. Well, it just happens that all the people in Portage do owe money. So that's, I suppose that's not a good example. But if I really wanted to know, okay, let's just do this over. Uh, let's see if there's any that have zero. Over zero. Let's just say equal to zero. So there's one person in Grant City that we saw before that had zero, but I'm still getting all of the Portage people because I didn't say uh, zero. I, I don't really need the, the uh, equal sign there. I can just put zero. And in fact, everyone in Portage owes us money, so uh, we're, not, we're not seeing that. Okay, so that's the criteria and the or row. And you'll notice that I didn't put these quotes around the words. The, the program put that there. So I'm not going to worry. I don't type extra stuff if I don't have to. If it wants quotes around it and it wants to do it, that's fine with me. I don't, I'm not going to leave it. I'm going to leave it. All right. So I'm going to delete these. And now I'm going to add another um, table to this query. So I'm going to hit Show Table, or I can also right click and hit show table. It doesn't matter, you can see the icons the same in both places. All right, so I already have the customer table open. I think I'll look at the pet table. Okay. Uh, you know what, I'm changing my mind. I'm gonna put the groomer table. I'm adding this and now I'm going to click on the pet table and delete it. And I'll, I'll tell you why in a minute. All right. So you can see the groomer table, when I added it, it added this line, and no matter where I stretch it, it will continue to add it. And this is a one-to-many relationship. So the customer table, the customers have a groomer. And in this table, one groomer can have many customers, okay? One groomer can have many customers. But one customer cannot have many groomers. We're, for our database purposes, we're saying each customer only gets one groomer. That's it. And maybe it, it depends the groomer is in that town. This is a mobile pet search, ser, service or something like that. So it's a one to many. Um, and now let me add the groomer first name and last name. So look, it says first name, last name, first name, last name, but this is from the customer table, and this is from the groomer table. Now, we're going to, um, it, it's going to, well, let's just run this query and I'll show you, okay? 
So because we have the same field name in here twice, first name, last name, the database doesn't really like that. It, will, it You can't have the same field in with the same words. The, the fields have to have um, names that are different. There's a better way to say this, but I'm sorry, I'm not thinking of it right this second. So what it does is it puts customer.firstname. So I know that's the table it's coming from. Customer first name, groomer first name, customer last name, groomer last name. Now, if I get rid of this, these two, and run it, then I just see first name and last name because there's no duplicating of this field name. All right, so now we know here's the customers and here's their groomers, okay? And it happens that it is actually sorting it by uh, groomer, well, that's funny. Uh, Mary's name comes, M comes before R comes before T, but also H comes before J comes before S. Um, so it's, I don't know which one it's grouping it by, but it's not grouping it by customer number because these are not alphabetical. Usually it would do that. That's interesting. I'm just noticing this. So if I wanted it to absolutely sort by this customer number, I could tell it to sort by ascending or descending, right? Top to bottom, bottom to top. And sure enough, it starts sorting them. And then here they are. Uh, their groomers just go with that record. All right, so we can sort by certain things. There are different ways to sort, but this is an easy way. We won't get into too many of the other ways. So let's talk about this for a second. This is um, the join property of this query. And there, uh, we're not really going to get into this too much, but if you don't have, if you don't have one of these when you insert a table, if for example, this is not there, all you have to do is find the field that is the same in both of them and you drag one to the other. And it doesn't matter which direction you go, left to right, right to left, it doesn't matter. So now I have the line there. It's different, it's not showing that one-to-many relationship, but let me show you where that one-to-many relationship exists. And you, we will talk about relationships in class. So under database tools is relationships. And I've already put two tables in here. And I've already created the one-to-many relationship. So let me close this. Yes. And now I'm going to do the same thing I just did in the query. I'm going to click on one and drag it to the other. And here's my relationship. It's saying from the groomer table and from the customer table. And that's why it's good to make sure that they're named the same. So it's easier. And I'm going to enforce referential integrity, which will give me that one to many. And create. There's, um, there's a lot to talk about in this, oops, let me click on it and right click, on this referential integrity. We're not going to worry too much about it. Um, if you really want to know, ask me and I'll be happy to explain referential integrity and why we make sure we have it, but this video doesn't need to get into that. All right, so here's the relationship, and if I wanted to, so you can see I'm in relationship tools, I could actually run the report. If your teacher wants you to run the relationship report, you just click it here. All right, I'm going to get out of this. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. Before I get in here, I'm going to Again, there's the show table button or right click and show table, either way. And the only one that isn't showing in here is the pet. But when I click the pet table, I don't have anything in here. Groomer number, customer number, owner number. Oh, so the customer number is the owner number. So they're not named the same. Let me see if I can link them customer number in the customer table, owner number in the pet table. 
I'm going to enforce referential integrity and see what happens. Create. All right. So actually what that means is the, and of course every pet has one owner, but the owners can have many pets. Okay. Um, but what this referential integrity means, one of the things is that all of the people in the one, all of the people in the one, and then this case two, have a matching number in the many. Um, okay, I'm, I'm not going to get into this. So anyway, here we are. We have a one-to-many relationship. If you want to know, you ask me, and I'll I'll talk talk about it. It's not that difficult. It's just a little bit lengthy for this video. Okay, so I have um, all three of these linked. So I'm going to close it. Yes, I'll save it. Okay. So now I have this, and I've already run. Let me go back to my design ribbon. I've already run this. And I've got an answer, so I would, you know, take it over to Word. And then maybe I want to see, um, I'm going to change city to balance and see who owes us money. Oops, greater than zero. <laughs> greater than zero. And then I'm going to tell the, the groomers, please make sure your customer pays you. Okay, so maybe um, I can see that Mary has three customers that doesn't haven't paid and Ron has three customers. So now I'm going to wonder why is Mary not collecting from her customers, right? So we're using queries in our database to make business decisions. So maybe we need to talk to Mary and Ron about how to make sure that they're collecting from the customers at the time of service. I don't know, but there's lots of business decisions that need to be made. Oh, look, I already had balance in there once. So I added it again, and it went, what, what, what? You already have it in there once. So it put this field name, expression 1001. Let me go back. Sure enough, I already have it in here. Let me just delete that. Okay. Run. Okay. Here it is, looking better. All right. So I would have all of these saved to my Word document, and I would put my name somewhere in the header, and uh, oh, I have my cap locks on, um, somewhere in the header, and then I would uh, print it out for my teacher, okay? Making sure that each query is uh, well marked so that they know um, what query you think it is you're answering, all right? So if you have any other questions, Ask your instructor. See ya.